Alright, this will be uh, number three from the 2008 BC exam, um, and it's a series question, and a lot of people are afraid of series questions. So, um, the first one you, you're you going to do is you're going to write um, the first degree Taylor polynomial, which actually is just the tangent line, um, but you definitely need to know uh, this formula. So, Taylor polynomials, it's the summation of the nth derivative evaluated at a, the quantity x minus a to the n over n factorial. Um, a is the center. Uh, and it pretty much is always just given to you. Um, so knowing that, um, f of x, uh, that should actually be h of x in the context of the problem. Um, but that'll be um, t of x, so I'm calling the Taylor polynomial t of x, so that's, um, so it's h of 2 plus h prime of 2 over x minus 2 to the first over 1 factorial. Strictly speaking, you don't need to put to the 2 to the first and the 1 factorial, but I do it because it makes the pattern... Um, consistent. So just filling in values from the table, um, we get this, which you can see is a tangent line. Um, we're asked to evaluate um, h of 1.9, which would just be approximately t of 1.9. So I'm just substituting in. You get that. So 67.2. Um, and then the question is, uh, over or underestimate? Well, over or underestimate for a tangent line is almost always based on concavity. Um, so h prime is increasing, that's given. When you read the problem, make sure you understand everything that's given to you. Um, they tell you that all four of the derivatives are increasing on the interval. Um, since h prime is increasing, we know that h of x is concave up on the interval from 1 to 3. Um, so this is going to be less than the uh, true value, since concave up the tangent line is below the curve. Um, and that's part A. Uh, part B is almost the same question, except now you're going to use a third degree polynomial. So I'm going to call this polynomial P of X. I'm going to write it out in general, um, mostly just for your benefit. So it's H of 2 plus H prime of 2 over uh, times X minus 2 to the first over 1 factorial plus H double prime of 2, X minus 2 squared over 2 factorial plus H triple prime of 2, X minus 2 cubed over 3 factorial. Okay, and now fill in values from the table. Um, so, uh, when you actually when you finish this problem, you'll see they gave you three rows in the table, but you only need one of them. Um, not sure what you would be thinking that would cause you to use those other rows, but uh, we're not going to need them. All right, so h of one point nine, approximately p of one point nine, um, and uh, grab a calculator and punch that in because this was a calculator question. Um, and that's actually all there was to part B, is just making sure you know how to write a Taylor polynomial. Um, part C, we're looking for the error bound. So a lot of people have trouble with the error bound. Um, the first thing to do is make sure you know the formula. It's not going to be given to you. Um, so it's m and then the absolute value of x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. So if you stop at the third degree, then n plus 1 is 4. Um, so it's really, it's almost exactly the same as the first term left off. The real issue is how you figure out m, and m is the, uh, it's the maximum, it's actually the maximum of the absolute value of the fourth derivative on the interval, um, but in this case, uh, it's, it's actually going to be positive, so we didn't need the absolute value part. Um, so since we know that, um, the fourth derivative is increasing because that's given. Uh, the maximum is going to occur at the right endpoint. So this is what we're going to use for m, 584 over 9. Now we just plug it into the formula. So plug it in, uh, so that's m, and then it'll be the absolute value, and that's going to be 1.9, which is where you're evaluating the um, polynomial, minus 2, which is the center, to the fourth. Since we stopped at 3, we're using 4 here, over 4 factorial. And uh, that's approximately uh, this, obviously, by calculator. Um, and you can see that that's less than what it's supposed to be less than. So we must have done it right. And um, so that's a, a pretty typical series question. It's actually on the easier side, I think, because we didn't need to uh, integrate anything or deal with it in that way. But uh, knowing these formulas, is it's just essential. If you don't know them, you're, you're stuck on these problems. So make sure you know them when you walk into the exam, and uh, good luck.